Alright, time for another Giraffe Science video presentation. Yes, it's him. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, I did a search on the double slit in the last month just to see if there's anything new or, you know, worth uh, pointing out as crap. Um, but it's, you know, Khan Academy India, which, you know, it's in English, though. <laughs> yes, my whole... I mean, it's obviously another fake, simplistic, forget about actually testing any of this or obliging it to be consistent with reality. Let's pretend this is the actual double slit pattern, just, you know, on, off, on, off, on, off. So bad. All right, so I'm obviously not the only one to point this out, but there's a ton of stuff I'm the only one pointing out, and it's their irrefutable facts. And they're just being ignored um, and that's tragic um, sad for science that it hasn't figured this simple stuff out and it has been around for a while so the curved screen obviously is a an obvious one I mean it's sort of obvious if you just do the math a little bit just superficially recognize that you have an, a, a length <laughs> when you can't change the length in the math the math has to use the same length so you can't project it on a flat screen because then the length has to change. You have to change it in your math. You can't use the same number. I mean, that's so elementary math. I mean, that's. Um, I mean, in America that might be high school math. In England it might be grammar school math. But I mean, that's the kind of math that a million people should have caught that huge mistake. I mean, it's so glaring and obvious and stupid. And the other thing that there just shouldn't be any dispute. I mean, you shouldn't even, it shouldn't even be possible for somebody to make a two slit video and say, this is the pattern, you know, that, that it, this is the, that, that the, they'll just use the single slit pattern to say, there, there, that's the pattern, it's just on, on, off, on, off. First, they have to recognize that this center one is two nodes, okay? So there are, there are in fact, it is in fact, okay, um, not certain that this is well see that's getting to one of my insights and i don't want to throw that in here yet um but anyway so the first thing you have to acknowledge is that that center maxima is bigger in the single slit huge by comparison to the other nodes and then the double slit is you know it's just so obvious that you know there's two patterns you know you can have up to boy this is a very clean board it's not writing very well um, you know, that you have this obvious circumstance where the pattern is broken in these key locations, okay, that have a, <coughs> that have their pattern in themselves. Um, and what I've pointed out is how obvious it is, how the two patterns are being superimposed on each other. I mean, I don't even want to use the superposition word, right, because they've turned superposition into... Uh, one thing is two things. Um, but anyway, uh, so, you know, Ken Wheeler talks about it as if he's making some valuable contribution and he thinks this is the two slit pattern. He thinks this is the two slit pattern. He doesn't even acknowledge that this is the pattern you have to explain. You have to explain what this is, and wh where this came from. And you have to explain why there's a, you know, there can be three of these nodes in here or seven or 15 or 20 you have to explain why it's variable he doesn't do any of that he has coming he, like i say he's not even describing this pattern so he there's a whole bunch of physics he, he's not even coming close to you know explaining and then he gives you an explanation that it's just i, I have to say that the, his, this video is probably the dumbest most vacuous most empty most content deprived 22 minutes that he's ever produced it's so bad so um so i'll just give you the quick lesson in the beginning of the video so you know some of this stuff all right so the first thing is you got to remember that this is a it's on a curved screen okay um that's what the math is predicting and that all the nodes are exactly the same size and that you can sort of understand because of the curved screen that you're really just talking about um, in the in the double in the single slit, you're really talking about two point sources. Okay, that's what the distance is, and the distance is either the 
the distance of the impediment, if you're using a single impediment, or it's the distance of the opening of the slit. But the key point is, is the math is using the surfaces. The surfaces are identifying the significant place. And that's where you're drawing with your math. You're mathematically drawing these lines. That's what your math is doing, is drawing these lines and predicting what's going to be at those lines. So when there's a full wavelength of distance, that means you're in phase, and you have constructive. Okay, And there's always going to be a consistency in that um, constructive interference. Now what they say, which is really, again, not very clever, so these are physics professors, and they sort of haven't figured out. They always say, well, look, these two lines here, okay, are equidistant, so this has to be constructive. But what they're not figuring out is that's inside of less than one millimeter of space. When you go in, you don't enlarge. So everything on the inside stays inside of one millimeter. So you're only one millimeter on this surface. Is it actually constructive? And it's only constructive one little tiny line inside of that one millimeter. So it's a tiny, tiny little spot that's constructive. And that if you really, and if you sit there and do the, make the mistake of saying, oh, this is constructive interference right here. There's a full node here. Then when you do your math and you figure out, okay, they're all the same size. Well, the problem is, is now you're forcing this one to be something. It has to actually be consistent with this one. So if this one was, you know, say that the length is the right amount, this one would have to be an on. And the fact is, is this line are the lines you can't dispute. You can't tell this distance, this extra path length, to be, say if it was, you know, if it was 15, <laughs> you can't tell it, okay, that it has to be an on. Or, you know, if it was 15.5, that it's an on. You can't force this pattern, because this is actually variable. This can be an on, or this can be an off at 90 degrees. And if it's an all, you know, the two will have a different result up here because it has to be consistent. The bars have to be exactly the same size. You can't change this. So if this changes from an on to an off, this end's position has to change from here to over here. It has to change. But that's why there's a double in the middle is because there are two nodes, actually. And they either, the nodes are either separated by a little bit of distance or the nodes are overlapping and they're turning into essentially one load, node because they're overlapped. But those are your, the two choices. So that the, the middle is changing. This is an illusion. There's two straight lines here. It's an illusion because those two lines are going in opposite directions where all of the measurements you're taking are lines going in the same direction. That's sort of the giveaway. It's one giveaway. I mean, the other one is just the obvious optical illusion that the stuff going in has to hit a limited amount of space. It can't can't go, there's only so much space on the inside. Very finite, very small. There's lots of space on the outside. I mean, that's the, something physics should have figured out. But, you know, the key ingredient was without, it, because they didn't do the curved screen, then they didn't realize that there's a 90 degrees over here that's really the most reliable. That that's, those are the two vectors that'll tell you what everything else has to be. And because that's the exact amount of the slit opening is going to be in those vectors. And you almost don't need any triangulation. You don't need any sine theta, okay, because it's going to be exactly the addition of this distance to the line. You're not doing the triangle thing where you're superimposing, where you're, where you're trying to figure out this is your base and this is your, your two lines and you're not trying to figure out this hypotenuse thing. You don't have to do any of that because you've put this extra distance right on here. And now you have two lines right here in parallel. And so it's um, the geometry is much easier. So this one's a guarantee. You can't, this one's non-negotiable. And this one's telling what's going to be here. So anyway, the key, key to the whole thing. So then for, the, for this double slit pattern, the easy thing you can figure out if there are two vectors that you're comparing in the single slit, then there must be four vectors in the double slit because you have four, you have twice as many surfaces. So if, if the surfaces are what you're using, then of course you have to use all four surfaces in the double slit 
And what you'll find is that this big distance between the two outside ones, the largest distance, that's creating the little bars. Okay, that's telling them where they're going to be. Because the wider the distance, the more wavelengths you can put in there. Okay, and the shorter distance, the impediment, that one has only a few wavelengths. And that's creating the envelope, which is that's dictating that this is going to be a blank because it's on and off. It's going to be here on and then on and then the, this one's a double and then on. That one's the real pattern for the two interior slits. And so all you're really saying is where are both of them on? Where are all four sources producing light? That's what you're going to see. So when all four sources, all four surfaces are pro providing a influence and they're all in phase, that's when you have a light, a bright, and the rest are offs, obviously. You know. Brights when they match, uh, in phase, full wavelength of distance, full wavelength of distance, full wavelength of distance. When that happens, bright. And that's it. it explains the whole pattern, it explains this big mystery. And clearly the point would be is that obviously this isn't anything like sound waves. Sound waves do create two waves coming out of the openings. There are no, you can't think of four little waves right at the surface. What happens at surfaces? Oh, that's right. There's electrons. Electrons are scattering the pieces of the photon, breaking the photon. The polarization of the photon is rather large, gets broken. Photon is now broken in space. It's still flying through space, but it's broken. And all you're saying is, where do I put it back in phase? And guess what? There's a 50-50 chance okay, that you're heading in phase or heading out of phase. You're just doing this, left or right. okay? And there's just a 50-50 chance you're more left than you are right. And um, so half the light, 100% of the light goes in here. 50% of it gets wiped out by the slits. And 50% of it is reconstructed as photons on the surface, perfectly consistent with what we see. All right, so that's the real explanation. That's the genuine two slit. Okay, and now we'll listen to Ken Wheeler just butcher it. I mean, just screw doing anything logical. He sits there and uses the word genuine and logically, and there isn't any in his video. There's just no Nothing genuine, nothing factual, no evidence, no connected to anything, no no explanation that isn't just made out of completely what he complains about. He complains that conventional physics is full of unicorns and bullshit, and everything he says is bullshit, indecipherable mush. So this whole video, he's just ragging and ragging and ragging and ragging about how quantum physics and how Tesla was right that light is sound, when clearly it's not. The two-wave math doesn't work. You can't make the double-slit pattern with two-wave math. It doesn't ever, ever produce the right result unless you eliminate the slits by making them so close together they're the same point source. They're coming from the same place. Anyway, so we'll play this. But So this is the point where he's showing his blackboard, right? Okay, so... How come it's not, this image isn't changing? Well, anyway, sure. The light bulb doesn't, bulb doesn't emit anything. Oh, great. Thank you, YouTube. <laughs> yeah, that was great. Can you actually play the video, please? Oh, it's got to play the commercial. So yeah, everything's just full of commercials. This is just the arms horrible. Are They're creating a perturbation in the medium. All of us alive, unfortunately, we're living in an epoch of atomism. Oh, yeah, atomism. So he calls it atomism, and let's understand that quantum theory is wavyism. So it's not atomism. They think electrons have a frequency. How is that atomism? I mean, it's just such a lie. So he's, you know, he's so straw manning conventional physics, trying to say they're particle physics when they're not even close to particle physics. They, they don't think anything's real. They don't think anything's really a particle. So what kind of joke is this? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just so bad. It's such a cheat to sit there and and try to call conventional physics some sort of clearly mechanical, um, you know, strictly binary. No, they don't have any of that. 
capitalism. When you actually delete out the ether, you actually have to engender this nonsense of. So, so you get rid of the ether, uh, and that's like okay. Then, then you have to get have unicorns if you don't have ether. And what is ether but a unicorn? You can't explain what any of this stuff's made out of. You can't draw me a picture of your ether working. You can't show me what the ether does in any way whatsoever. <laughs> There's just no way for you to do it because you can't make it into anything mechanical and logical. So again, he's using the word logically. There's no logic to a substance that has no properties for which you can't make it do something. You can't show how it goes from state A to state B, to state C. You can't show me the step-by-step -step procedure of the ether doing its coaxial cable thing, whatever the hell that is. Uh, you know, Mother Nature being a crazy chick. Um, with so again, he's the one with the crazy, you know, fluid that Mother Nature's swimming in. You know, is Mother Nature in the ether too? Swimming, wave making in it, whatever. A bag of magic bumping particles to the cult of what? So again, they don't have any bag of bumping particles. They have a bunch of waves. They draw the photon as this. How is that a particle? How can you argue that it's particle physics when they don't have any particles in it? Where's the particles for gravity? Where's the part? There's no particles for any of this crap. How is entanglement created by in particles? There's no particles in their theory. Everything is just particle interactions and bumping particles. Right, so there is none of that in their physics. There's absolutely, they throw away the 200 years ago, well, 300 years ago, they threw away momentum. They threw away the most logical, sensible way of understanding energy transfers there could be and turn that into mush. The magical kinetic energy square the velocity super energy. Doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it isn't something that, oh, every single fact just screams the existence of this. I just make it go a little bit faster and I'm, I'm generating twice as much energy. Because I made it go faster. You replace the ether, you create a thousand contradictions, which are completely. Okay, so more nonsense. The contradictions are created by the fact that we're trying to um, analyze something that's very I invisible. You know, it's, it's, it's very small, okay? It's hiding from us, sort of, okay? <laughs> um, so the contradictions just come in the fact that we have very grainy photographs and we have to try to, to decipher what's in the photographs and, um, you know, Round things can look like square things, and all kinds of deception can exist. And there can be a lot of, hey, that looks like, or hey, that seems like, and it's really nothing like at all. So, yeah, on off is a, you know, kind of a simple pattern. You can expect to see it in a few places, and every time you see it, you can't jump to the conclusion, it's a water wave, because it's not doesn't match. The math doesn't work. I mean, the math hasn't worked for the two-wave theory to explain the double slit. The math doesn't get the position of either nodes right. It doesn't get the envelope right, and it doesn't get the little bars right. So it's been wrong for 200 years, explicitly incorrect, and physics hasn't fixed it. Because physics hasn't paid any attention to it, because they accepted their Wu theory Okay, not their particle theory, their woo theory, all right, and um, they didn't want to look back. Possible and unsolvable. The double slit experiment assumes, and we'll get to the heart of the matter, it's very simple, let's say, well, here, over here we actually have the emitter and it, it encounters the photons. So this is the genuine double slit experiment explained. The old stupid drawing, the math that doesn't work, two sources won't work, two sources works, for the single slit, two sources, two surfaces. It works for the single slit. It Obviously, if you have two slits, then you have to have four sources. That math will work. Two sources won't work. We shoot one photon. We get the, and I'm going to read to you what they say in one of their lectures here. They're completely confused because every physicist and everybody in the cult of quantum, and they're all atomists. So, so, so again, keep saying they're atomists when they're not atomists. They're waviests, okay? So, and Ken is saying there's no such thing as a wave, which is really kind of retarded, right? Because this whole theory is that it's a wave in the ether. I mean, a wave is always a wave in something. Nobody thinks of waves as being all by themselves in nothing. So why is the word wave verboten? 
they are basically conceding the existence of a field or something that's waving. So why are you complaining? They're already they're already on the road to your ether. I mean, what do you think their magnetic field is, or their electric field, or their electron field, or their muon field, or their tau four field? What are any of those fields do you think they are except some kind of ether? So they're already on your side, you idiot. You're just trying to get them to call all the fields ether, okay? And that's it. So that would be your big change. So if all the physics changed all their rhetoric and said ether instead of electric field or ether instead of magnetic field, you'd be happy, wouldn't you? Is they're totally confusing the double slit experiment? They're totally confused because they think light is a particle. Okay, so no, see, you're totally confused because you don't even know what the pattern is. He thinks the single slit pattern is the same as the double slit pattern. He doesn't know that they're different patterns, completely different structural f pr uh, attributes. Pull a wave and emission, on and on. All this nonsense that light is not. Um, read from the slide here. When the slit's open, a particle interferes with itself to produce the observed two-slit interference pattern. So whether it interferes with itself or interferes with another particle, who cares? I mean, that's, that's getting into the real mush. The fact that the math doesn't work is the important fact, right? Whether, it's, whether you make up a story about how one thing goes in and two things come out doesn't really matter. But we know in sound that's not what's happening, right? We know we're pushing sound through both of the openings. You know, there's no mystery. The sound isn't turning into some sort of different kind of wave to interfere with itself to tell the sound where to go. And in light, um, you have to come up with an explanation that likewise recognizes that, but you have to do it in the form of, you know, it's not just two waves coming out of the opening. The opening isn't the important part. The obstruction is the important part. The place where matter is sticking into the photon's way and creating a barrier, a surface, that's the part that is clearly the variable that matters. That's the variable that you change it and you change the pattern. Well, that's simplex constructive and destructive interference. You can actually produce that inter Simplex. So it's simplex. So the idea of whatever this stuff is, I can't make two laser beams crash into each other and bend things and change things and interfere with each other. I can't force forces to interfere with each other in any other experiments. So why is it all of a sudden okay to say forces interfere with forces or ether interferes with ether when it won't do it in all the other experiments? So you're not even fixing your own contradictions. Why is your ether incapable? Why, are the, why am I incapable of crashing two laser beams into each other, but I can do it if I make them go through a slit first? Why does that magically make the difference? Trans pattern by using a uh, you know, double slit uh, bracket set inside of a tray and actually a tray of water, you know, in a push. Right, and you'll get exactly the wrong math for the light pattern. The light pattern will not match the water pattern, it produces a different pattern. The patterns are not alike. Facts. Uh, you know, generating uh, this effect. However, of course, uh, there is something starting at an origin originating point and then passing, literally passing through the slit. So that's a false analogy when it comes to water. However, the effect and that effects are different. Uh, are different. Uh, it says here, confused, you're not alone. We do not understand this quantum behavior. See, quantum is not a thing, by the way. Tesla, Steinmetz. All right, so, so he spent all this time just arguing about quantum not being a thing when if I went back to Steinmetz to these people, I bet you I could find some point where they were talking about the elemental nature of the uh, universe and the fact that there might be some elemental Planck thing. So let's understand, because Planck hasn't shown up to Planck to give them a few of these constants, um, but they still already were on that road. So he's implying that they would object to quantum, and, and frankly, I don't think they would, Ken. I don't think they would object to the idea that this the forces, the elemental universe, comes in clumps. The uh, Maxwell, Heaviside, these people, they didn't use quantum because quantum has nothing to do with field theory, it has nothing to do with Mother Nature. They didn't use it because the word wasn't in use, okay, but they certainly did speculate about such things, and I think they all would have speculated about some sort of, um, uh, they don't, I don't think they were turtles all the way down type people. Quantum has nothing to do with Mother Nature whatsoever. It's just this atomistic belief system. It's a real right, and as demonstrated by a bunch of experiments that basically demonstrate 
that you have to have a whole photon or no photon. There's not a half a photon somewhere. It's a whole photon or there's no photon. It's not, you know, it's not three quarters of a photon or one tenth of a photon or one millionth of a photon. You can't cut photons into a bunch of little pieces and say, there's a real photon. Now, I'm obviously arguing that the photon is pieces, but it's like breaking the, the solar system into pieces and saying, here's a bunch of moons and here's some planets and here's a sun. Well, none of those things are a solar system. Okay, they're all things. They're all something, but they're not a solar system until you put them in a solar system. Religion, and that religion uh, uses quantum. And we don't understand it. It's a quantum effect. Well, what is this? What's well, a quantum effect? Well, what is this weird effect we see over here when we do this thing like the EPR period? So, so just understand, the whole beginning of the video is the same bullshit. So he just goes on about all this crap, and it's supposed to be something about the two-slit experiment. So all he's done so far about the two-slit experiment is shown this, this drawing that isn't true. Okay? It doesn't... It isn't accurate. It won't create the pattern. These two waves going through the holes won't create an accurate description of the pattern. Now, if you want to pretend there's a single slit here, okay, and you got two waves on the surface, then it will give you the right answer. But that's a single, that's a huge difference, right? Yeah, huge difference. Well, that's just a quantum effect. That's quantum tunneling. That's quantum gravity. But we see light, you know, it doesn't make any sense conventionally because, you know, light can't really be, and it's not rational, it's not logical. Light can't be a particle and it can't be a wave, yeah, but it's both. That's what Einstein says. We cannot okay, let's understand. Einstein didn't say that voluntarily. So he's, again, you know, he's the, another straw man that Einstein wanted to concede that point, and he didn't. So Einstein didn't want to do wave-particle duality. He clearly wanted to stay in the Newton realm of let's deal with this thing as a quantum, a clump. Um, but he couldn't do it. I mean, he couldn't effectively make the argument, so he had to concede because everybody was um, discounting him if he didn't join the club. Plane lights as a particle and a wave, but if we use this wave particle duality and say light is both a wave and a particle, you know, then it explains as well. That doesn't make any sense. So, again, Einstein didn't invent wave particle duality. Let's just, you know, he, he's not the guy who said, uh, let's, let's create this duality. That wasn't his idea. Sense. Anybody with a half a brain says, you know, it's not a part. A wave is not a thing, by the way. There's no such thing as a wave. As so, again, he just says there's no such thing as a wave, which is no point in saying it. Waving is deci it's describing an activity that something does. It waves. So, w what's the point in saying there's no such thing as a wave? I mean, I know this rhetoric, is, I guess, means something to some people because they want to discount everything. So, um, you know, they're just naysayers and, and you know, um, objectionists. You, you know, there's some sort of community of gothers or something who just want to pretend everything in the real world isn't real so they can evade all their responsibilities. The government's bad. Everything's bad. Everything's broken. Everything's evil. Everything's trying to cheat me. You know. <laughs> that's that's the all that this could attract, right? Or just a bunch of, um, you know, truther nutters. Many, many times. Well, it doesn't make any sense. It's a wave and a particle, and this is duality. Nature doesn't have any dualities. It's impossible for nature to have dualities and planets. Right. It is stupid. It is. It, I completely agree. So what? You're not explaining why there can't be a duality, and you're certainly not explaining why. Well, clearly in this experiment, right? So let's understand. Their duality, physics is saying wave-particle duality. They're not saying that duality exists all the time. They're saying for the purpose of describing reality, they will sometimes use a wave theory and then sometimes use a particle theory. They're not using the same theory at the same time. So they're clearly when they're doing their two slit thing, they're in your camp of talking about waves, not particles. Inherent contradiction. No contradictions at all. There's just a lack of human understanding of intellectually bereft humans. So it doesn't make any sense. Well, right. And you think it's showing how you're interact intellectually not bereft by doing a video titled Genuine Double Slit Experiment Explained Logically and you haven't explained anything about the experiment. And this is quantum. See, this is, and all of quantum, not my opinion, by their own admission, is based upon their understanding of light. Well, we don't understand this. You know, light can't be a particle and a wave and a wave particle. Device. But this is where we came up with quantum. So it doesn't make any sense. That's why it's quantum. That's what quantum really should be called. You know, when we don't understand things about Mother Nature, we call that quantum. Uh, so just, <clears throat> just more crap. I mean, obviously there was a reason for it. Now, the fact that they've turned quantum, which was about 
uh, the fact that it's all discrete little bits that you could figure this out chunks and they've turned quantum into entanglement and all kinds of other crap it really doesn't have anything to do with clumps unprotected machines like this one are ripe for random phishing attacks Exciting. If mom's company had given her the HP Elite Dragonfly with uh, Wolf Security, my attack would be dead on arrival. Uh, God, evil. Can you explain this, Mr. Professor? So, well, I can't explain it, but it's quantum. You know, the real explanation is this is a quantum effect. Well, that's not an explanation. We're getting, we're getting to magical word. It is magical. This is a religion. Right. He's using this magical word. He's just yelling. Religion, yelling you know, then it is impossible to explain, but that's, there he goes. Um, that's their intellectually bereft position. They don't understand what light is. So, and it really, really is important that over the years, I've been asked thousands of times to explain or talk about the double slit experiment. And the reason why I keep refusing... Okay, so, so he was going to put his thing away, and then he realized, oh yeah, wait a minute, I have my drawing on the other side, you know, my special explanation. So this is the big reveal. He's going to show us, he's going to logically explain to us the genuine reality of the double slit experiment. Yeah, it's on that, it's, it drew a picture of it even though I made many videos on the double slit experiment, because all of these people, whether they argue for the double slit experiment to have be this way or that way, they all start out with the same supposition that we know. What yes, you always start out with the same supposition that doesn't have anything to do with the actual physical reality. You haven't even, you can't even draw the pattern right. Like this, and none of them do. You can't do an experiment on a medium and with a medium with a re given result of the same medium, if you don't know what the medium is, forget about the experiment. If you don't know what light is, you cannot begin to do the experiment. Yeah, you can, okay? <laughs> That's the whole point. You can do experiments all over the place. You don't know what have to, you don't have to know anything. You're basically just saying, what does it do? And then you're gonna try to explain what could make it do that and what couldn't. And it's the first thing you look at it in a single slit is, hey, I make the slit smaller, which means the, l the stuff is more likely to go by the surface Oh, and it diffracts even more. Yeah, maybe the surfaces have something to do with it. Hmm, yeah. Not too hard to deduce. I don't have to know what anything is made out of. Because all your suppositions and your theories and your observations are, are defective. So there's his, this is, the, this is it. This is the double slit genuinely explained. There's a one and it breaks into two ones. And that's why there's a pattern. Well, that sure explains it, right? There's no doubt about it. That's definitely it. Here's the really simple explanation of the double slit experiment, right? It's not an emission right here. You actually have a, a generation of the medium perturbation, say it's sort Okay, you have a generation of the medium perturbation, which means the media, the stuff is moving, right? He, he won't say the word. He won't show the one is moving that way. It's moving towards the slits and will go through the slits and this stuff will happen as time progresses. But he'll just say some bullshit. Perturbation. Well, that means it has to move, right? Verse number one. But light is not traveling. Just the sound is not So again, just, just it's not traveling. What the fuck does that even mean? Nothing's traveling? Well, no, the phenomenon is traveling. Whether you say it's whether it's doing this and you're saying, well, this happens here and then that happens here and then it happens here. It means the event is traveling. So just put it in more rational words. Say there's an event happening. The event is traveling. It's moving from here to there. The event isn't staying here. The event is moving to there by exchanging the event. One guy says, I'm going up and down. Here, you can have the up and down card and you can go up and down. And then the next guy hands the card off and says, you go up and down. So what? It's traveling. Not traveling. You're disturbing the medium, just like someone flapping their arm. So again, more bullshit. I disturbed it how? Medium what? Uh, you know, no, there's no explanation for any of that crap. Arms in the water. What happens is, at the double slit experiment, you now have two originative manifestations, point one and point two, just as if point one and point two were two original sources. And then you... <clears throat> Except they're smaller. Right? <laughs> And so how do they do what the laser beams can't do? How do those little ones crash into each other and catastrophically do something and whatever, blah, 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 blah? How does any of that happen? Why are they different than the regular ones? Why can't the two laser beams bash into each other and do shit? Have at that point classical constructive and destructive interference. So it's classical 
um, he's conceding the existence of this classical stuff when no, it really isn't because it doesn't fit. The pattern isn't the same. It's much more complicated. And what it really is, as I'm pointing out, what it really is, is you're just breaking photons and remaking photons. No big deal. That's the class that you're classically breaking and then getting out some crazy glue and remaking. And the destructive and constructive interference is no different than the conjugate geometry of the magnetic field. Okay, whatever that is. It's no different than the conjugate geometry of the magnetic uh, coaxial cable thingy. Dielectric, both of which are one of Blah, 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 blah. That's logical somehow. That mush. Same thing. It's like talking about ice and water. They're not two different things. They're mutually canceling in themselves. They're mutually canceling. Ice and water are mutually canceling. That's logic. Everything vanishes in counter space. Mutually destructive field. Okay, ether and counter space. Which which is it? Counter space or ether? What the fuck? Is I mean what what is that? The ether is in counter space or is the counter space in the ether? I mean, come on. You can't have a duality, an ether counter space duality. You can't have an ether counter space duality. Come on, Ken. All these are one and the same thing because magnetism is, quote, the dielectric field, which is exactly what it is. So nothing is being emitted in the double slit experiment. It's not traveling, it's not a particle, it's not a wave. All right, so all just absolutely stupid statements in the sense that those phenomenons are obviously well describing what's taking place. You don't have to know what it is that's happening that's traveling. You're just saying the happening is traveling. Explaining it, though, because Mother Nature is really, really, really simple, but, you know, not all that simplex, especially for people to understand. Oh, it's simple, but it's not simplex. But when you actually have a field perturbation at source one, when you actually now have the double slit with a double window, you now have two originative sources as if the source point origination is at the location of the double slit. Right, and it won't get you the right answer. So, the, 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 you know, the truth is that won't work. So it doesn't work. It's not the truth. It's not the way it works. It's completely misinformation, not even close to uh, accounting for the actual pattern, which has to be made out of four sources. And this is all demonstrably easy to understand if you understand that light is not traveling, light's not a wave, light's not a particle, light is definitely not a duality. All right, so somehow he's saying it's easy to understand wave interference. He said classical wave interference. It's easy to understand if you know there's no waves. I mean, the best way to understand wave interference is to know there's no such thing as a wave. That solves the problem. Right now you can understand why there's wave interference. That's classical reasoning. Light doesn't have a speed. It's the hysteresis of the rate of induction. Uh, but the medium uh, is against it's, itself. It's this is the speed of sound. fucking stupid. It doesn't have a speed, except it oh, definitely has a speed. He'll say the word, light speeds up when it leaves a medium. <laughs> he uses those words, so he can use the words, but we can't use the words. Is that the rule? Only people who, you know, are morbidly obese get to use the words and everybody else isn't allowed to? Is that the rule? It's the hysteresis of the air. Nitrogen and oxygen. Actually, the speed of sound changes are based upon the density of the air. Uh, right, and it's obviously the density is, has a huge part of the density. It's going to be humidity and a lot of other things, but anyway. Also, too, temperature. Of course, temperature affects that air density. And this is the reason why Nikola tells us that light can be nothing other than a sound wave in the ether. Right, and he would be wrong, too, because, again, you can't, you have to account for the actual pattern, not the imaginary one, not the, the you know, the one you just made up. You have to go out and look at the actual pattern and then explain what the actual pattern is doing. Actually do measurements on the pattern, and you'll see, oh, that's right, that two-wave crap doesn't work for the two-slit. It doesn't make the pattern. Because that's a near-perfect analogy. Because light is not an emission, just the sound is not an emission. But every human being suffers the intellectually bereft defect. So we know that its uh, reflections are a big part of what's going on in the universe, right? As I pointed out, we all know that if right, there's energy going in here, right? There's, there's light hitting it, there's microwaves, there's your cell phone calls, right? There's you sending your, you know, whatever, the picture of your butt to your girlfriend or whatever. Uh, boyfriend or whatever. Uh, anyway, there's all this energy, all this stuff hitting this thing. It can't, if it absorbs it, then it's going to get bigger and bigger. It has to grow because it's absorbing a whole bunch of stuff. So basically all you're arguing about is 
the stuff you reflect right away that is I, I see it's you know the light came from the light bulb bounced off of it went to my eye and it didn't lose much speed obviously and then there's reflections that just take longer it goes in it fucks around for a little bit and then it pops out that's all there is so we're all reflecting the universe and you're just talking about the stuff that takes a little longer to reflect I mean, it's, you know, jiggles around for a little while. And that's all that's happening in the universe. That's the simplest diagram you can get. I'm thinking that a speed implies undeniably that something is moving and being emitted and is moving. Yeah, speed implies moving. Yes, it does do that. Oh, fuck. And yes, light is obviously moves through space. It has to move to get here the event from point a to point b but that's not the case with light that's not the case with sound neither is it the case of a person in the middle of a pond flapping their arms they're not emitting it, anything it, it, creating a disturbance and a perturbation in the medium yes I, so what the perturbation the medium takes time to move from one place to another place in the universe it's just a fact it moves there at a set speed depending on the medium so why is he playing this word game and how do people listening to this say that makes sense to them to just deny the existence of fundamental language understanding the double slit experiment is a clear sign of how very very far away human beings are in understanding natura naturans or mother nature you cannot explain nature without the ether anyway i hope you like this all right video. without the ether i mean it's just too silly sorry it's just that's just too silly okay uh, it just gets in the way if i try to make an ether i'm stuck with a fixed geometry it's like trying to turn the universe and put it on a checkerboard and I'm just gonna run into these horrible problems where logically it does not gonna make any sense because you know going this way on the squares is less distance than going diagonally on the squares you know all kinds of problems like that ether doesn't fix anything it makes a mess out of everything but anyway that's you know, that's why physics doesn't do ether that's why it does I mean, that's why it does magical forces it doesn't explain. It's because it can't explain anything called the goo that something waves in. None of the stuff in conventional physics that's doing any waving is doing any waving in anything they can describe because if they try to describe it, it won't work. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There's no physical geometry they can create that will permit their ether to function their their field their whatever i guess that's all they you know they just say field and that's it except in the case of bent space they say bent space which is really stupid they say bent nothing oh uh, anyway so just so bad this plant is just so fucking horrible oh god damn Loonies to the left of me, loonies to the right of me. I mean, it's just couldn't be just so bad. It's just such a horrible, awful place to, <laughs> just to be stuck on. What an awful planet to be stuck on. Anyway, so that's enough of a video. Um, can any decent, well, decent people acknowledge the truth ever? I mean, I mean, there's smart people who are smart enough to know all the crap I just said is, yeah, it's right. And what are you doing about it? Anything? I mean, I have trolls that are, you know, constantly looking for any errors I make, anything, any defects, so they can jump all over it. And look, they don't do this to Ken Wheeler. Why don't you go out? If you need to, you know, punish somebody, <laughs> you know, <laughs> why not this guy? Come on. It would be fun for you. Oh, God, I just, this is so bad. Uh, so, anyway, till the next time and such, right? Let's get the hell out of here. So depressing. But I will endeavor to persevere because that's the motto here at Draft Science. We shall endeavor to persevere. And by doing that, we may succeed.
No, I think we'll inevitably succeed. I just don't think there's any way we can possibly fail, frankly. <laughs> there's just no way. I mean, yes, we personally won't succeed in the sense that we personally won't get anything out of all this work. Um, you know, we won't get a, you know, a kind word or a, you know, a prize. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, they can't, you know, they won't even, maybe, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe. See, they've never made an exception to the Nobel Prize to give it to a dead person. But in my case, yeah, that seems reasonable. So they should give me the, they should give me my fucking prizes. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, the point is, is the future, I own it. As Tesla, you know, Tesla falsely claimed he owned the future with his wacky theory. But the truth is, I have already defined the territory. I've invented the wheel, okay, as a, as a object in my imagination. And I've explained it to you. And the truth is, is you're going to be using it in the future. The future is going to be the truth. Truth is always going to win. And um, you're going to have to accept it eventually. The truth of the curve, the truth that the nodes are the same size, the truth that the 90 degree angle has to be the one that's the most reliable. So you can know that that fake notion of the, the little tiny space inside of one millimeter isn't the truth. <laughs> you know, it isn't the true um, result that's taking place. And if they just did their own math and actually drew it, if they actually just did that much, right, is they actually t took the vectors and did each location and said, what does it add up to? They would see that, oh, wait a minute, right here in the middle doesn't match just a little tiny distance from the middle. I, I move from the, the center of one millimeter. I move just that half a millimeter away. And all of a sudden I was constructive and all of a sudden I'm not constructive anymore. And I should be, but I won't be. The math won't work. It won't say it's constructive interference. So it's so the truth is already there for them to do and see, but they just won't do any of that. <laughs> it's the truth isn't that important now. Uh, they're in a, 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 a being bad human stage. Um, you know, they're not doing very good science, and they're going to figure that out eventually. Because you know, eventually it's going to be known that all of this crap isn't true that they've been telling you. None of it, none of it is worth the money they've invested in it. Well, anyway, till the next time and such, so forth and whatnot. Yeah, I was supposed to have left, but I didn't do it. But I will do it this time. So this has been a draft science video presentation. Blah, 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 blah.